friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another short but hopefully informative video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator where today we're going to be taking a look at the VNAV system of the Flybar Wire and giving you a couple of hints and tricks that you can use to try and get a better top of descent and basically a better VNAV experience. So I've been hearing quite recently that a lot of people are struggling with the VNAV in the Flybar Wire in that it sometimes gives them a top of descent that is too late, meaning that you're quite high on your approach and things not being quite accurate in terms of it tracking the uh, the green yo-yo and things like that. So in this video, we're hopefully going to go and address a couple of those issues because actually the Flight by Wire team are doing an amazing job with the VNAV, but some of the coding in the Flight Management Guidance Computer does need tweaking a little bit to give it a helping hand. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can go in and amend some of the constraints that you have in the flight plan to give the aircraft the best chance of being able to follow a nice steady profile all the way down until you're ready to come out of managed descent mode and descend using either VS or using just open descent. Let's go and take a look. So here we are in the flight deck and we are en route currently to Lisbon, planning to land ILS runway 03 and we're going to be taking the InBomb 7 Kilo arrival. So let's go and have a look first of all at what that looks like. Here's the star and you can see coming in via InBomb we've got various constraints, we've got speed constraints, we've also got altitude constraints as well and all of these will be programmed into the flight plan page on the McDo. So how are we going to go and edit these to help the VNAV system fly it a little better? Well, let's first go ahead and check that all of these constraints are indeed correct and showing as they should. So if we have a look just here, we can see if we go and find InBomb, which is our first one, we can then compare them. So we've got InBomb just here where we have a speed constraint of 280 knots and an altitude constraint as well of 250. That's at uh, the Fatima VOR, as you can see just uh, just there. We've then got Papa Tango 405. Again, we've got an altitude constraint anywhere between flight level 135 and 200. So if we go and have a look at what's popped into uh, the constraints page here at 405, we'll see that the simulator has currently got above 135, below 200. So that is obviously correct. Let's bring up the chart again and we can just go and check the rest. And a lot of these constraints on this chart, there is a range. So between a certain flight level and obviously flying below a certain flight level. Well, this is OK, but we can perhaps tidy this up a little bit to help the VNAV system while the fly by wire team are still working on it to fly the approach a little bit more accurately. Basically, the information contained within the flight computer has to be as accurate as possible to have a good natural descent using the VNAV system. If you've got rubbish information in there, well, then you're probably going to find that the uh, control descent or the top of descent marker that you get might not be accurate. It might be too late leaving you a little bit too high on your approach. So we're going to go in and refine this a little bit. So let's go ahead back to the flight plan page and see how we can do this. One of the first things I would be looking at are any constraints in the chart which are actually hard coded. So the only one that we've got on this particular arrival is here at PESEX. We absolutely want to be at 4000 feet and a speed of 180 knots. So that is a good one to make sure is absolutely hard coded. Let's go and find PESEX and check that one out. So here it is, and at PESEX we can see it has got 4000 exactly. It doesn't have a plus or a minus in front of it. So that's good. Let's have a look then at the others, because with such a vast range between all these, sometimes the VNAV can get a little bit confused. So it's well worth going in and amending these, or even clearing them out altogether. So what you could do, for example, is at Fatima, it says we want to be below flight level 250. Well, if we go in there and actually tell it, you know what, instead of being anywhere below flight level 250, let's be at flight level 250. That way, there's no gray area. The aircraft is going to commit to being at flight level 250 by that waypoint. If we come down a little bit further, we can then see, obviously, the next one 
again we've got a range between flight level 135 and flight level 200 so let's go in and pop in a nice sort of happy medium of course if you're following air traffic control you'd have to go by what they request but if you're uh, flying offline or there's no controls online on VATSIM you can go ahead and do this without uh, without any issues so at 405 let's go and pop in uh, flight level 150 So then working through all of these, you can see that we've got another one, two, three waypoints, all with different constraints in there. So you can go ahead and obviously pick something sensible between all these. So at Oddlix, for example, we could perhaps pop in at flight level 90, again, just at happy medium. So we'll go ahead and do that one. But then once we've just done Oddlix at uh, 090, after that, these two really are a little bit superfluous, so we can probably go in and delete these just because it helps the aircraft's computer system just focus its intent on being at flight level 90 here and flight level 40 just there. We can also go in and start to put in some speed restrictions as well. Now these don't have to be speed restrictions that are shown in the star. You want to give the aircraft as much information as early as possible for it to be able to calculate how it's going to descend the aircraft. And as we've seen in some live streams recently, the aircraft's VNAV system that fly by wire have coded is doing incredibly well. And it's even taking into account any speed restrictions that it might have in here during its descent planning. So let's go ahead and just check what we've currently got. So we've got 250 here. We know that I've popped in a uh, an altitude of flight level 90 here. So obviously we're going to be below 250 knots or at 250 knots as we're below 10,000 feet. So let's go ahead and just pop in a speed restriction there because it knows then that we plan to be 250 knots when we get to Oddlix. And then from here, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clear all of the constraints from uh, Papa Tango 401 and 402. Clearing the constraints is easy enough to do. We just find uh, 401, 402. And let's just go ahead and clear those. That's the first one. 402. Go ahead clear that one and then we've got PESX which we said was the hard code at 4000 there's another one at 422 showing there uh, which is just here so obviously we can probably go in and also get rid of this one as well so let's go ahead and clear that however at this point we are going to start to be on our approach even maybe on the ILS as you can see just the way that this particular uh, approach brings us in the star takes us right onto the ILS so would I want to be at 250 knots at this point possibly not so let's start telling the aircraft that we do plan to start slowing down so 220 knots is a good speed at that point we can start getting flaps out things like that and configuring so we've just popped a speed constraint in there just so it knows so now the aircraft has got a nice path to follow and calculate and that will now fly the descent much more accurately because it's got a lot more information and it's hard-coded rather than just having a range of altitudes to follow. At the moment I found at the time this video has been made that if it has a range of altitudes to follow uh, sort of as you can see here between uh, two different levels the VNAV doesn't work quite as well as if it's got some absolute hard-coded altitudes in so you can use this as a way to try and fine-tune the uh, the descent and I found this works very well so what this now means is when we are ready to start our descent technically what we could do is we could select the final altitude here on the FCU. So our final altitude, as uh, we spoke about, is 4,000 feet. I could, if I wanted to, roll this all the way down to 4,000 feet when I was ready to start my descent, rather than dialing in the different altitudes that we've selected. So a flight level, of course, of 250 here at Fatima and a flight level of 90 Odlix. We could, of course, select those 
on the FCU, but because we've gone in and set everything up already, we could, if we wanted, simply go to an altitude of 4,000 feet and then push for a managed descent. This will then, because we've coded everything into the flight management guidance computer, the aircraft will work out at what VS speed to descend by, and it also has the speed constraints that we've popped in there to also help guide and calculate how that's going to work. There are some approaches, however, that have hard constraints already coded in to their standard instrument arrival. And if we have a quick look at this one here at Gatwick, the Barmy One Golf, you'll see that these ones are fixed constraints, flight level 260, 22, 14, speed constraints as well, and then finally flight level 70 there at timber. This kind of approach, you wouldn't really necessarily need to go in and start to tinker with the constraints in the uh, flight computer just because they're already there. There's not really that many of them, so the aircraft will probably follow these quite nicely. In contrast, however, there are some approaches that don't have any constraints, and it's down to you as the pilot, or of course air traffic control, if you're flying under ATC on VATSIM, then it's down to you, the pilot, to work out how you're going to program this descent. This is pretty straightforward, because you've got no constraints that you need to sort out, it's purely just down to you as a pilot to work out and go in and program how you want to start your top of descent and how far from the airport. And a good way to do this is to have a look and see what the actual final approach platform altitude is going to be and you work backwards from there. So we've got minimum altitudes shown in small here. So between Lomke and Papa Romeo 511, the lowest you can go down is 5,000 feet. Well, obviously we're actually quite a long way away from the airport here, so we wouldn't get down to 5,000 feet so soon otherwise you'd be trundling along at 5,000 feet burning a lot of fuel for quite a long time. So if we were to work backwards for this approach, the final approach fix is Rezu coming into Prague, runway 24. Let's just bring that chart up and we can see the platform altitude is 4,000 feet. So for me, what I would be looking to enter into uh, the flight plan page, I'd be looking to enter a constraint here, uh, Papa Romeo 532 of 4,000 feet and probably a speed of around 200 knots as the aircraft will then be aware that it will be slowing down. It needs to be at 4,000 feet by this point and that will allow you then to capture the ILS at the platform altitude and you've already got a top of descent from the VNAV system provided to you on the navigation display. So hopefully this video has been useful for those of you who like to fly the fly-by-wire A32NX, the experimental version of their mod, which has working VNAV. I do find that the VNAV works much, much better if you've got some hard constraints, altitudes that are at and not either above or below, but the altitudes that are at, and of course if you can pop in some planned speeds that you also intend to be at at particular points, then the VNAV computes it really rather well as we've seen recently in some live streams thank you so much for watching if you have found this video useful please do give it a like and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future content or live streams thanks so much for watching i'll see you all again very soon bye bye for now